Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate a depalletizing operation using Python API. Now this is an exercise for the Control Robots tutorial, which you can find in the Visual Components Academy. If you need to go to the Academy, you can click the Help tab here, click the Academy button, this will open up a web browser, and take you to the Visual Components Academy. So if I click Lessons, Here's the Control Robots tutorial, so I do recommend you complete this tutorial before starting this exercise. Let's close this out, and in the 3D world I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. There's a robot connected to a pedestal, the robot has a mounted gripper, there are two conveyor lines, and each conveyor line has a sensor conveyor, and if I run the simulation, the conveyor line over here has a pallet with boxes, and what you want to do, you want to stop the pallet at this sensor, tell the robot to pick those boxes and place them over here. Now I've already wired these signals of these sensor conveyors to the inputs and outputs of the robot and I've also positioned a native tool frame in the robot to be where the imported tool frame is in the gripper. So you just have to focus on writing the Python script in this exercise. So you can do this exercise on your own or you can follow along with me in the video. What we're going to do is we're going to use the vchelpers.robot2 module in Python API and this makes programming a robot in Python very easy. And if you want more information about that module, you can go to the Help tab here, and then click the Python API button here to open the Python reference guide. So if we actually scroll down to vchelpers.robot2, here's the documentation for that module, or that library. And notice you have to use a constructor to create a robot object that can be used with this module, its properties and its methods. Actually close this out and reset the simulation. So what you first need to do is decide where do you want to put your Python script. You can put it in one of these sensor conveyors, you can put it in the robot, but in my case I'm going to use the pedestal. So I'll select a component here, go to the modeling tab, go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero, and add a Python script behavior. And notice it opened the editor for me. So in the script I first want to import that module, so from vchelpers.robot2 import everything, so I'll use an asterisk, and I'm going to be using the on run event. And in the on run event we need to create that robot object, so I'll say robot equals. The constructor is called get robot, and since this script is not contained in the robot, you have to construct a robot in a different way. So if we look at our layout, the robot is connected to an interface in the pedestal, and if I go to the component graph panel, we can see that interface is called robot interface. So you can pass the name of an interface that is connected to a robot to construct that object you need for the module. So for our constructor get robot, we'll give that interface name of robot interface. And let's print out the object to make sure that we constructed it. So I'll compile the code, run the simulation, and reset. And we can see in the output panel we do have a VC robot2 object. Let's now teach the robot to stop a pallet once it reaches this sensor here. So that involves waiting for the pallet to reach the sensor and then turning off this sensor conveyor's path. So if I go to the program tab, select the signals checkbox here, and use the jog command to select the robot. Let me minimize my script for you. We can see the sensor conveyor has two signals. It has a sensor boolean signal, which is used to send out a value when a part triggers the sensor here and a start-stop signal, and that is used to control this conveyor's path. So when that signal value is true, the path is turned on. When it's false, the path is turned off. And in the input and output editor, you can see those signals are mapped to input port 100 and output port of 100. So the sensor boolean signal is an input port of 100, and the start-stop signal is the output port of 100. And I'm going to use those two ports, I'm sorry, those two signals, to stop the pallet and the conveyor's path. And if you're confused, you know, and you follow along, you actually don't even need to wire these signals from this conveyor here, so I can just cut them away. And we're left with the input port of 100 and output port of 100. Let's now hide these and go back to our script. And to get the inputs and outputs of the robot, it's very easy. I'm first going to use a while loop to test the value of a port in the robot. So I'll say while robot dot signal map in. This gives you the inputs of the robot, which is a boolean signal map behavior. And I'll use a method called input. This allows you to get the value of a port, in this case 100. 
And if the input port of 100 is not equal to true, we're going to keep on evaluating the value of that port until it's true to break out of the loop. So I'll use a delay here of 0 0.1. And once we exit out of this loop, we do know that the sensor of the conveyor was triggered by the pallet. So we'll then stop the path. And we'll do that by robot.signal map out. And this gives you the outputs of the robot. And we're going to use a method called output to set the value of a port, in this case 100, to false. So this is going to turn off the path of conveyor. Let's compile the code, run the simulation, and the pallet should stop once its origin reaches the sensor. And yep, it happened. What we want to do now is teach the robot to pick parts from these pallet, and let's actually look at how this works. So we have a conveyor. This pallet is attached to the conveyor, but the pallet also has its own child components, which are these boxes here. So what we first want to do is get a handle for the conveyor, then get a handle for its pallet, and then get a handle for the parts that are attached to the pallet. So let's reset, go back to our script, and I'll leave a comment here to say that I basically was waiting for the pallet, stop the pallet, add sensor. And then we're going to get the parts of the pallet. So I'll say app equals get application. And we're going to use that to find a component in the 3D world. In this case, the conveyor. And I'll say conveyor in because this is where the parts are coming from. So it's the sensor conveyor here. So conveyor in equals app dot find component. And you need to give the name of the component, which is sensor conveyor. If you forget the name of the component, you can go back to the home tab. Click the cell graph tab here. And in the cell graph panel, you can see the names of the components in the 3D world. So we can see here it's called sensor conveyor. We then want to get the pallet that's attached to the conveyor at its first level, in this case, attached to the root node of the conveyor. So I'll say pallet equals conveyor in dot component children. This will return a list, so I want the first child component. I'll then create a list of parts that are attached to the pallet, so I'll use pallet dot child components. Now the difference between these two properties is component children will return all components that are directly attached to that node, in this case the conveyor's root node, whereas child components will return all components that are attached to the node and the nodes in its tree. So let's actually print out our results. So let's say print pallet.name and print the length of our parts. So if I compile the code, run the simulation, pallet stops, we get the name of the pallet, which is correct, and we get a length of 12. So if we look at the parts, we can see there's two, four, six, there's two layers, so we get a total of 12, which is correct. Let's now reset this, our simulation, go back to our script, and now after we get the parts, we want to pick them, and I'm going to use a method called pick from pallet in vchelpers.robot2. So I'll say robot.pick from pallet, and we're going to give the pallet that we want to pick from, which is this variable we created here. And that should be it. So let's compile the code, run the simulation. Here comes the pallet with the parts, and what will the robot do? It picks a part. <laughs> All right, good to go. But it actually picked this bottom part over here, so it seems that we need to reverse or invert the order that the robot picks these boxes. And this might be hard to remember, so I'll go back to the Help tab, click the Python API button here, go down to my vchelpers.robot2 documentation, and I'll go to my methods, and scroll down to find pick from palette. Here we go, and here are the arguments. So we pass the palette object, we can give the approach distance for picking the part, and notice here we have this keyword argument called inverse order. So if this is true, we can reverse the order. If it's false, it won't reverse the order. So in our script, let's say inverse order. I actually need to reset the simulation first before reading the script. So say inverse order equals true. Let's compile the code, run the simulation, and we should expect the robot to pick a different part. And it does. It picks this part over here. Great. 
but it seems that we do need to alter or change the approach distance for picking the part, which is also the retract distance. So for our script, let's reset. Edit our call here to say approach equals, and let's use 300, and put a comma there to separate the arguments. So I'm passing the palette, the approach distance, which is also the retract distance for picking the part, and the order in which I want the robot to pick that part. So I'll compile the code, run the script, and now we should see the robot pick that part at a different approach distance. And it does. There you go. Now you may have a few questions about this pick from palette method. What's happening here for the inverse order is actually getting the child components of this palette, which you, we got here for this parts list. So if you're using a different method for picking parts, you know, you can use this list to reverse it or sort it however you want to to teach the robot to pick the parts. So let's now reset our simulation. And after the robot picks the part, we want to place it over here on this conveyor. So in our script, let's leave a few comments. So we'll say pick part. And now we want the robot to place the part. So we'll say robot.place. And where do we want to place it? Well, we want to place it on this conveyor here. So let's actually get a handle for our out conveyor. So I'll say conveyor out equals app.findComponent. This is the other sensor conveyor. So sensor conveyor, hash sign, or pound sign of two. In the cell graph panel, you can see this is the name of that component. And then when we place, we'll place it at our conveyor out. Let's compile the code and see if that happens. So the robot should pick one part from the palette and place it over here. Here it comes. Show me that magic. And yeah, there we go. So now that we have the robot picking and placing a box, we just need to loop through all these boxes for the robot to pick them and place them over here. So let's reset. We're going to use the length of our parts list now to our advantage. So we'll say, instead of doing these separate, let's do a loop. So we'll say while. Actually, sorry, we don't want to use a while loop. We can just use a for loop. So for part in parts, we'll then call this script here. So let's just give it some indentation, move it on up, and instead of calling the sensor conveyor in our loop, let's actually cut this here and paste it before our loop. So now we just have two simple statements, pick from the palette and place it on the out conveyor. So if I compile the code, run the simulation, let's see what happens. So here come the palette with the parts. The robot picks one box, picks another box, and it keeps on picking. Yes, sir. Let's see if the robot picks all the boxes. So it's done with the first layer. And I'll speed it up just a bit, the simulation. The robot gets down to that last box, and it picks it. Great. So I'll stop the simulation here. For my for loop here, you could do this a different way. You could say that for i in range length parts, so I'm using that built-in method in Python to get the length of the list, but you could just do it the way I had it earlier. So you could say for part in parts. And then of course after the palette is empty, we want to move it down the conveyor line. So let's actually turn the path of the sensor conveyor back on. So let's leave a comment here. So pick and place parts from palette. And then after we do that, let's use the robot signal map out. So it's output ports or outputs, sorry. So signal map out dot output. And we're setting the value of the output port of 100 to be true. So originally we turned the path off once the palette reached the sensor, and now that the palette is empty, we're turning the path back on. So I'll compile the code. Actually, I need to reset the simulation and compile the code, otherwise the robot you know, won't see those saved changes. Let's now run the simulation again, and I will run it super fast. See the robot pick everything, and we expect that the palette, after it's empty, will just move on down the conveyor line, and the next palette will come in with parts. And 
there you have it. But since we're not using a loop to pick and place all the parts off all pallets, you know, obviously they just keep on moving. So let's fix this in our script. Now I cleaned up the code and completed the next step. I used the application object to create one big while loop in the on run event. So while the simulation is running, I'm stopping a pallet at a sensor. I'm getting the parts that are on that pallet. I'm then telling the robot to pick and place those parts onto another conveyor. I'm then turning on the path of the conveyor to move out an empty pallet, but be very careful with this. The pallet would still be at this location, so it may trigger the sensor again. So in my script, I created another while loop to test if the pallet is still attached or in the conveyor. So as long as the pallet is in the conveyor, you know, I just keep on looping back over and over again, testing. And once the pallet leaves the conveyor, it's no longer attached to it as a child component. I then loop back here and start the process all over again. Let's run the simulation and see how this works. So I'll minimize the script. Here comes the pallet with boxes, and the robot gets to work. And after the robot picks all those boxes on the pallet, the pallet should just go down this conveyor line, and the robot should start working on this pallet. So here's the last one. And there you go. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.